Thomas Gilliland, G-I-L-L-I-L-A-N-D, Harris County Sheriff's Office, Media Relations and Public Information Office. At approximately 16.40 p.m. today, a suspicious person call came into the 3300 block of Pebble Trace Lane. Um, reporters stated that a uh, male suspect was in the backyard of the residence. Uh, the report he stated that a male subject was in the backyard of the residence prowling around in between the two homes. Uh, simultaneously at the same time an unknown medical emergency call had came in to the house directly next door to the suspicious person's call. Um, as Klein uh, EMS arrived on that scene, deputies were arriving to uh, answer the call on the suspicious person. As they were approaching the house, a male subject came up in between the two homes and pointed a pistol at both deputies, firing two rounds at them. Deputies, fearing for their lives, discharged their weapon, striking the uh, suspect and killing him. As of right now, the homicide detectives are trying to figure out if there's any coordination between the unknown medical emergency that was next door and the suspicious person's call, which ended in the deputy involved shooting. Can you talk a little bit about um, the deputies? You said there were two, they both fired their weapon? There were two. As of right now, only one uh, deputy discharged his weapon. Uh, two deputies arrived. Uh, the uh, suspect was armed with a handgun. The handgun has been recovered. Uh, again, the situation was as they walked up to the home, uh, this male popped up from behind a fence. He was actually standing on a chair and had been peering back over the fence line from what the report he had told us. And as they approached the house, uh, he came back up and as they walked up toward him, he fired two shots from the pistol at the deputies. Any idea why this guy would react like this? Don't know yet. And that's, that's what our investigators are trying to find. It, it, what is the... Um, Again, how is he fit with anything? If, if the uh, first scene is related to the second, we don't know yet. Uh, obviously, the female that uh, was in the home, we're trying to find out from her, but uh, she was transported in a very uh, critical condition. So as soon as we'll be able to get some information from that, maybe we can start putting the pieces. But right now, we're still trying to get exactly what's happened. I was going to say, can you talk a little bit about that medical emergency? She was shot? Uh, well, you know, when the, the call came in, as a female stated that she heard a loud noise and found the uh, female in the bottom uh, second story uh, of the house on the floor. And that's all we had at the beginning. Uh, Klein showed up. While they were treating the female uh, for her injuries is when our deputies arrived to the second call next door. And as literally while they're treating the female, the, uh, the gunfight ensued directly outside the door. But you don't know what kind of injuries this woman has. Uh, we do know that she has a, a wound to her head. Now, what we're trying to find out is if it was a, a gunshot wound or some type of other wound that she sustained from either a fall or something. That's what we're trying to figure out. What's the relation between the, the woman who fell or whatever and the woman who made the call? I don't know yet. Uh, just the report, he was, yeah, the report he was inside the house. I don't know the family member situation, whether it's a, a friend or a family member. And there were just two women in the house? Uh, as far as you know, yes, that was the only ones. Yes, ma'am. The, the medical emergency was at 3311 or 30, the shooting was at 30, uh, 3311 was the medical emergency, and then directly next door was a suspicious person's call. Is this 3309? Um, I think it's 14 on the first one and 11 on the second. It was next door. So just next to door. be clear, there was two calls made, right? One for the non-emergency right. and... And yes, exactly. Two and how, calls. How separate? Couple of minutes apart. Maybe a few minutes, but um, you know the the deputies and Klein uh, uh, F EMS showed up at the same time. So as one group are going for the unknown medical, our deputies are arriving next door to uh, to figure out the suspicious person's call on this person that was um, prowling, seen prowling between the homes. And he's dead in between the homes. He's yes, he is. Right yes, he was struck and killed. You and it was pronounced. Hit. You don't know if he was if he was prowling around the home of where the woman, the injured woman, is. Do you know? That's what we don't know yet. Okay. Don't have that information. We do have the information that was from what the caller stated was that she had noticed him in the backyard, uh, walking around, and then had a chair propped up against the fence line and was peering back over the fence, 
back and forth. He'd step up on the chair. Exactly. That's separate a separate call. call from the one who said, some, I heard a thump and there's somebody laying exactly. on the ground. Exactly. In the medical emergency call, um, and I think you probably already made this clear, the person that made that call, do they know the woman with the wound on her head? Or the women that, they know each other, right? We're thinking. As far as are they being neighbors or just? No. The medical emergency, like the person oh. called said, I just heard a thump and there's someone with the wound. We know that they're in the house. I don't know the family relationship. I don't know whether it's uh, mother or daughter or friendship it's or, not like or an what. Intruder. No. Okay. no. Okay. So some sort of okay. Okay. Yeah. There's some sort of connection. Whether There's or not some kind of it. Yeah. Between the person who made the murder. And what, what's call hard is we have we have one female that we can't talk to, and we have a suspect that's, you know, yeah, the, d dead. So we can't talk to him either. Who made that call about for the medical emergency? Did she describe any of your noises in the house? Prior she to just the she uh, what she had told the. Uh, Klein is as far as there is medical was that she heard a thump and found the uh, the person there at the bottom laying on the second floor so do you guys think you're going to be here for a while is this i mean is this a scene that's going to wrap up before 10 or are you going to be out here for a while um no we'll be out here for a while have you all been able yeah. to interview the woman yourself who made the medical emergency call uh yeah she has been she's being interviewed right she's now being interviewed. Okay. yeah did you hear a gunshot or anything like that she said she heard a loud noise but didn't describe it as a gunshot um, the two deputies involved, one is a, uh, uh, an FTO, uh, along with uh, his, uh, what we call probationary patrol deputy, PPD. Um, she's a female. She's just been out on here, and uh, both are in good condition. Um, as standard with um, all deputy uh, involved shootings, um, OIG, our Internal Affairs Department, along with the Harris County uh, District Attorney's Office, will be investigating. Um, our deputies will go on uh, the standard leave of five days for medical and psychological evaluation. As soon as they are cleared, um, they'll be returned for work. But the one who fired is the training officer? Yes. The FTO was the one who fired? Yes. Okay. The suspect, was he alone or is there other people that you guys are looking um, for? As of right now, we only have the, the, the one suspect. Can you describe him to us again? Uh, male, mid-20s to early 30s. Uh, Nationality unknown right now. It's hard to tell. He could be Hispanic. He could be of uh, of different descent. Um, I don't have uh, no ID on him, which makes it a little difficult to uh, to find out who we're dealing with. Uh, I noticed that you guys were kind of looking at the surveillance cameras at, at, in homes. Have you guys been able to look at any of that? Um, that's one thing that crime scene will be going to see if we have anybody and try to get a timeline to see if this uh, person, if when he came into the neighborhood. Um, again, we're running a plates on vehicles that are parked in and around the area to see if he drove in, if he walked in, something to find out who, uh, who he was and how long he had been waiting and what was he doing waiting for here again. You say to call the scene pretty bizarre for you guys to have Well, exactly, and I, I think I, I tried to allude to that earlier, that it was very, uh, there's a lot of holes that we're trying to fill, and that's what the homicide are trying to do now. Yo, does it seem too coincidental for it not being related? Well, you know, I don't want to speculate on anything, and neither do the detectives, but um, the two calls being simultaneously is which was very strange amongst it, you know, having an unknown medical and then having the sus uh, suspicious person directly next door. I mean, it could so, be a coincidence. It could be. So. She just heard, she reported hearing a noise. And people, exactly. It could, could have been something she just fell and whatever. Might be no, no link at all. Hey, right. I, we don't want to speculate. And we're not saying she was shot. I don't know that. I can't confirm that until we, we hear from from uh, Memorial Harmon. Okay. Approximately how many shots were fired? Uh, I don't have that yet, Lloyd. We do know that he fired twice at the deputies. And were there two of them because, were they, are they riding in the same car because she's Yes, uh, they, they're a two-man unit, PPD uh, and uh, FTO training. Um, they go through their, uh, through their cycle of phases through training and then they're released on their own. She's pretty new. Uh, she's been uh, uh, starting uh, starting her, uh, I think, about a week now that she's been out on the streets. Is she in the jail part? Pardon? Is she in the jail part? Yeah, she was a detention uh, officer that transitioned officer over to a deputy. So it's not like she's like just out of the uh, just out of the academy or something. She's been uh, actually, she graduated last Saturday from the modified oh. academy. Okay. So then that's why she's with the training officer. Exactly. Yeah, she'll be going through her three phases. The FTO part. FTO part. The veteran guy. How long is the probationary period? Um, you have uh, nine weeks total, I think it is. She just nice started. Start to the week, huh? Her first week. <laughs> Her well, first week, job. yeah, it could be Her a life changer. Week.
Okay. All right. All right. So, are you um, you're going to be out here for the remainder of the night? If there's any updates or anything? Uh, we'll be out here for a little while longer, sure. <laughs> uh, if I can get a more medical uh, medical update, I'll come by and tell you. Okay. Okay. You know how long the FTO has been on? Oh, he's uh, yeah, he's, he's probably. Me, he's oh yeah, he's, he's been I think he's been here at least uh, twelve to thirteen years. Okay. Been here a while. Okay. Get it okay.